Hey guys, it's Mario here. I am here with my good buddy, Rado Antonio. How are Hello, you doing, man? man? I'm doing great. It's nice to, to meet you. <laughs> yeah, we finally got a chance to meet up. I came here to uh, Bucharest, Romania to uh, do a seminar. Rado was also speaking there. We had a lot of fun at the seminar. And um, I wanted to bring Rado on to talk about certain topics that I think we all will benefit from and get a lot of value from. But before we get into all of that, uh, for those that don't know who you are, can you share a little bit of uh, background? Yeah, sure. Um, I run the website, thinkitlive.com, and uh, I have a YouTube channel under my name, Rad Antonio. And uh, what I talk about is I present fitness for those of us that uh, want to put lifestyle first. So you want to have a linear muscular physique, but the gym and nutrition are not your main um, focus points in life. You want to maybe focus on your business, on studying, on uh, on other goals in your life, but you still want to have a, a great body. So I talk about that. I show people how they can achieve the, the body that they want while not compromising their their lifestyle, while, while still mm -hmm. having a lot of free time and uh, uh, for attention to be able to, to, to go on something else. So not, not being obsessed about workouts, not being obsessed about macros. That's yeah. That's what I talk about. Awesome, yeah. awesome, and that's what I like about uh, your approach is because Rado's approach to fitness is is very complete. So it doesn't assume that you're this gym rat spending six, seven days of the week in the gym for two hours, you know, hitting it hard. Which I mean is awesome if that's yeah. your thing. But if you're someone who is looking to get better in business, relationships, build something else in your life other than your own body, uh, then there's a whole there's this balancing act that has to happen and. One thing that I want to talk with Rado a bit about, and that's a very sensitive topic that I've, I've made a little bit of um, uh, content on it in the past. I made one or two videos on it, but it's sort of like this idea of how long would it take someone to see results on this journey? You know, and that's a question that we get every single day. We talked a little bit about this, and, and it's kind of like always th this doubt. You know, when am I going to start seeing these changes? And that's one thing that I guess we can we can relate because both of us were training a long time before we even like, I mean, even now, if you look at, do we even lift, right? But at, at some point, if you take off your shirt at the beach, I mean, people are gonna be like, holy shit, you know, like yeah. this guy actually does lift. But there is this whole transition phase where it's like nothing is happening, right? So uh, that's something that I wanna dive into a little bit. And uh, what's your experience? How long did it take you? So uh, in, in my case, uh, like everybody else, newbie games came fast. When I, when I started lifting in, in six months, I already reached that phase where I, I saw some changes. I saw that my arms were bigger, I had a bigger chest, I, I, I was feeling good. But uh, then at the six to eight um, months point, my progress just stalled because I did not know how to, how to progress my training. Up to that point, I could just add weights to the bar without focusing on uh, on progression but then I, I reached a point where I, I increased the, the weight so much that I was only doing maybe two three reps per set for, for, for an exercise and I was lifting to failure with a guy help with yeah. the guy helping me in the back <laughs> and uh, uh, because of that I just couldn't couldn't progress further and that was the first time that I that I uh, that I quit the gym because I, I just I, I became frustrated so I think that uh, most people would will see really great results in the first six to eight months, and then it's almost almost like overnight progress slows down, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. it, it takes maybe one year, maybe even uh, one and a half years to see significant changes in the mirror after after those those initial new beginnings. Mm -hmm. That that was at least my experience, mm -hmm. and of course because I I didn't have a coach, I didn't know what I was doing. It took way more time to to get uh, to where I wanted to be than uh, it could it could have. Yeah, like that, even that was the structure my experience and everything, right? Because yeah, when yeah. you don't have a coach or anybody else, you kind of figure out the the structure as well, which which is something. If I go back to my own journey in the first, even the first six months, if we break that down, I remember like the first three months, I, I was like doing this random plan that this guy sent me, who was also playing World of Warcraft. And <laughs> I mean, I'm taking fitness advice from someone who's playing World of Warcraft. That's how much I knew, right? And um, 
how's always like go to the gym you know you go to failure on every set right yeah, you right. literally it, it that's the one thing i i was known for in my gym it's like this guy is always training to death you know yeah. <laughs> and um i was always like come back home and i was like looking in my mirror you know i was like damn it like you know it's the same you know you go there come back look in the mirror is the same go there come back look in the mirror is the same for the first three four months zero changes but something does happen you know after a while like you start getting a little bit less sore you know like something yeah. you start feeling more buff uh, and um, I, I think that the six to eight months mark, if you do things properly now, you can make incredible gains as we see with, yeah. with, with people. But man, like, as you say, you hit that wall, yeah. which, is, which is the uh, sort of like the beginning of what I like to call the intermediate purgatory. You know, like you're just stuck. Right. And um, how, did you, how did you get over that? I mean, how long did it take you? What's the process? Uh, for me, it was. It took a long time. I I spent maybe eight months. So I I quit lifting after those initial newbie gains. Then I I, I came back. I made great progress again as a <laughs> as a beginner after I think two years, and uh, then I hit the, the same point. And I th that time I I didn't quit. I ke I kept. Uh, uh, training for another maybe seven to eight months without much much progress mm -hmm. and I, then I realized I, I, I kept reading and reading and watching videos and I, I kept applying certain things and what worked for me was actually eating more that mm. that was my that was my main thing because I I started with a cut I got really lean but then but I, I was I was super skinny I was Imagine a beginner with less than a year of lifting being at 9% body fat yeah. and, and six feet tall. I was really, really skinny. And uh, because of that, I, I really couldn't make good progress in the gym. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I started more, I, that, that, that was the, the main thing. I started making, making strength gains again. But uh, what also worked for me was doing more volume. Mm -hmm. yeah, doing and more. Uh, yeah, doing more and uh, not training to failure. That, that's a big one. Yeah, that's, that, that was my my uh my uh, two big aha moments uh -huh. yeah uh -huh. uh, and after that after i had some sort of a progression model in mind things started to to move uh, much easier mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and and one interesting thing that you said there is like this phase where you quit right and i see this happen with so many guys look if you're watching this video right now and you're thinking like damn it you know i'm in that phase Maybe you're just on the verge of getting that next burst of muscle gains and you quit. Yeah. And that's how muscle gaining process really works. You know, it's not super linear where you can calculate the grams are they coming. You know, people think it's like, okay, I go to the gym, I build 10 grams or 100 grams of muscle. And it's like, just go again, go again, go again. Right. It's sort of like, it comes in sort of like a burst, you know, all of a sudden overnight, you gain a little bit more than you've lost over time because the muscle protein is being broken down and synthesized and all of a sudden you got more. Yeah. And it's unpredictable at some point and you, you can not measure it exactly. And funny thing is you said, you know, the guy that quits and the guy that comes back to the gym, he's like literally building the same 10 to 15 pounds of muscle over and over, over, and, and, over and over again, again right? Same yeah. as those people that are... Um, and I mean, I've been one of those people, you know, like you lose the same freaking 20 pounds and regain it back and you keep yeah. losing and regaining the same weight. And it's a very similar process. Uh, cool. And uh, one thing, I mean, you mentioned there eating more, right? Yeah. Were you a little bit afraid that you're going to get gain fat? Yeah, of course. That, that's a that, big, that, that, that was the main reason I didn't want to eat more because I was reading about, I, I was reading a lot about gaining muscle without fat. Yeah. just by getting stronger and i thought yeah sure then all i need to do is get stronger in the gym mm -hmm. and i will gain muscle with no fat but how can you get stronger if you don't get bigger if you don't eat enough to support your training so that that was what i didn't understand is that is uh you you cannot get stronger without eating more if you're very if you're very skinny and uh um when I when I started eating more, my my bench went up, went up, my standing press went up, my chin ups stayed the same, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I I did gain fat, but I realized that it's necessary. Yeah, a little it's, bit. It's, of it's fat necessary. Is necessary. It's necessary. Yeah. I I just I just did a a straight uh, lean bulk for from nine to ten percent body fat until maybe sixteen percent body fat. So mm -hmm. I, I gained I gained weight slowly, like like you should, 
but I allowed for some fat gain. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's great because, yeah, you can, maybe you gain 10 pounds of fat, but with those 10 pounds of fat, you gain maybe 10 pounds of muscle if, yeah. if you gain at a one, one to one ratio. And uh, I think that was the case for me. And then I realized that, uh, so I bulked for about 10 kilograms. I increased my body weight by 10 kilograms. And uh, when I cut, I realized that I was five kilograms heavier at 9% body fat than I was, in, exactly. th than I was before. And I, I looked much better. And uh, so uh, since then, I realized that one of one, the, the strategy I use for building muscle without getting too fat is you alternate cut and bulk cycles in the range of maybe 8 to 16% body fat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that, that's what I do. So uh, I, I bulked until 16%. When I started to, to, to have just a four pack, a blurry four pack in good lighting, <laughs> that is when I, I realized, okay, yeah, I need to cut. I cut back down to around 10%. And then I spent uh, uh, two weeks at maintenance and then I lean bulk again until 16% mm -hmm, body fat. Mm -hmm. Then I cut back, then I bulk again. And by, by staying in that nine to 16% to body fat range, you can build large amounts of muscle over many years of training without ever getting too fat. Yeah. You, always look, you always look reasonably lean mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you always have, have good energy, you always have uh, good testosterone levels. It's, I think, the ideal method to, to build large amounts of muscle over time. Yeah, and, and I like that approach, what he just said. I mean, what Radu said is like being in a certain range and allowing yourself to go through that range in a strategic way, not going some kind of dirty bulk and I'm just like YOLO, you know, and, and in two months you gain 20 pounds and you got to cut again because yeah. all the stuff that you gained was literally fat. If you are already advanced, you, there's no such thing as like fast muscle gain if you've been lifting for a bunch of years and you, you're close to your genetic potential. So these phases that that um, when, when Radu is mentioning, one thing to keep in mind, the better you are, the longer you've been doing this, the easier it is to burn fat, the harder it gets to build muscle as you're getting closer to your maximum genetic potential. So think of it like this. If you've been lifting six years, most of the year you should be focusing on building muscle because losing fat for you is probably very easy because you know the systems. And building muscle, I mean, let's say the first year of training you build 25 pounds, the second you build 12 and a half, the third you build like six or something like that. You know, the, the, the fourth and the fifth one is going to be a fight for every pound, you know, every kilo of muscle that you gain in an entire year, it's going to be a struggle. Yeah. So that doesn't really allow you to go into some kind of crazy surplus of like a thousand calories because you want to gain. I mean, you might have to if you're this hard gainer who just fidgets off the extra calories. But for most guys, you want to start off with a very conservative, slow, controlled approach and then scale it if, if needed to, to happen. Now, one thing as well that I really like there is like there's this, there's this whole, uh, I guess it's almost like a clickbait right now that is happening it's like oh you can get super big without eating food just by getting stronger yeah. you know there's yeah. this whole clickbait world and you you don't see it like you don't see guys I, i've never seen anybody do that i mean I, i've seen some you know like very genetic freaks but i've never seen like someone get really huge without actually eating food yeah yeah and uh i think this is a great selling point for a lot of a lot of authors, a lot of uh, people that, that sell fitness courses, everybody wants to stay lean and get much bigger. E everybody yeah. wants that. And um, for me, it didn't work. I think some people can do it. However, and I, I'm pretty sure that you can gain muscle over time with minimum fat gain. However, the, um, the rate of muscle gain is significantly reduced. Yeah. Let's say if, you, if in your second year of training, you can gain maybe... 10 pounds of muscle by doing a, a lean bulk, a, a proper lean bulk. Yeah, like a real if, if you go for lean gains, basically muscle gains with minimum fat gain or no or no fat gain at all, maybe you can gain only four pounds, maybe five. Yeah. Or uh, it may, maybe, maybe even less. Yeah. And I think that this approach works great for advanced lifters mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. for advanced lifters, a lean bulk really doesn't make sense because if you can gain maybe two, three pounds of muscle in a year, then it means that you need to have uh, a few thousand calories uh, uh, surplus in an, in an entire year Yeah, <laughs> to, 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 to turn those, those calories into muscle. If you do, uh, if you eat maybe a surplus of calories, if you eat per month, if you have a surplus of uh, 3,500 calories, 
then if in an entire year you can gain only two or three pounds of muscle, then almost all of that is going to be fat gain because you, you, can, you can build so little per month. Mm-hmm. So a bulk, a, a bulk really that doesn't make sense. So I think lean gains for advanced lifters is a great idea. However, for intermediates and beginners, it, it isn't. It isn't because while it's great that you can stay lean year round and uh, <laughs> um, you, f- you have abs and all, all of that. Hashtag shredded. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag shredded. <laughs> Uh, the your rate of progress is significantly reduced. And um, considering that we all want results fast, I think a much better, a much faster way to, to build a, a great physique is to do uh, mm-hmm. distinct lean bulking and cutting phases. At least, I would say at least like four to five of these. If you're yeah. at a point where you're happy, dude, fine, right? I know when I did the uh, the phase where I just wanted to stay shredded all year round, that was the, the third year of my training. I didn't make, I mean, yeah, my, my I think my military press went up by, I don't know, like two kilos in an entire year. <laughs> yeah. You know, like two and a half kilos in an yeah. entire year because I just didn't want to gain. I was eating 20, uh, 2,200 calories the entire year, which was literally nothing. It was almost below... It's almost like my my entire energy flux, my G flux was at a low set point. So I didn't even, I was literally eating less and even moving less and doing everything less. And there was just no potential for me to build muscle. My squat went up by like, as like 5 kg or so an entire year, which is crazy, which is crazy. And as soon as I started eating, as soon as I got myself out of that perma cutting mode yeah, yeah. which which is a trap that i see a lot of people especially younger guys yeah. fall into that trap and if you're a guy in your in your early 20s if you're like 19 20 man like gain as much muscle as you can and don't don't beat yourself up if there's a little bit of fat gain it's totally fine as long as you have that athletic physique i, th- I think this is where the confusion comes we know i mean how a physique at 15 percent body fat looks yeah. Physique at 15% body fat for someone who is who has let's say an extra 20 pounds of muscle is a different physique than someone who's at 15% Absolutely. body fat. It's like no muscle whatsoever. And if you yeah. you've seen it happen, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. And uh and, and another point related to that is that uh uh the same percentage of body fat looks different depending on how much muscle you have. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that because if you see an advanced lifter at 15% body fat, you you might estimate him uh, to, to be leaner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you, you might say, well, he's about 12, <laughs> maybe 11, because he has a full six pack in good lighting. And you, you, you think that he, he must be lean. But then you take a beginner or an intermediate at 15, 16% body fat, he looks straight up fat. He, it's like, it's, it's, it's like uh, that, um, that uh, frustrating moment when with your shirt turn, with your shirt on, you look skinny, and with the shirt off, you look fat, and uh, <laughs> it's 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 frustrating. And um, I think that younger younger guys, because they they have less muscle mass overall, they want to have a lower body fat percentage uh, year round. Advanced lifters probably are more comfortable being fatter because they are, they they still have good definition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and that makes total sense. And how you can really know. Let's give a little bit of a, I guess, guideline. I mean, how can you really know if you're at a point where you can stay lean all year round? Well, look, the one thing I really like to look at is sort of as like a proxy to where you're at on your fitness journey is your strength level relative to your overall height and relative how much are you maintaining? How lean are you at, let's say, 12 to 15% body fat? If you can see some of a four pack at like let's say 15% body fat, you probably have enough muscle mass to kind of stay lean all year round if your lifts are really high. Let's say you can squat one and a half of your body weight for like 10 reps. You know, that, that's, that's pretty good, right? If you can bench, let's say, uh, one and a half your body weight for five reps, you know, that's, that's pretty good. Or even let's say if you can bench your body weight for like 12 reps, that's still okay. You still have some guys, you can see some guys with that amount that they're okay. The bigger guys, 80 kilos, can do 80 kilos for like 12 reps, you know, three sets. There's some potential there. And then if you can deadlift twice your weight, that's okay. You know, that's a starting point where you can start thinking about a slower bulk. You know, that's where you can start thinking about a little bit of a slower approach. But if you're someone, look, here's an example. You won't see a guy squatting 60 kg with big legs, man. Like, you won't see that guy, right? You won't see a guy benching 50, 60 kilos, 135 with with like a huge chest. Now, you don't, don't see these guys, right? 
and and I see guys that are at this stage, they're like, oh man, I want to get shredded right now. I want to stay shredded all year. At that point, to, for you to get shredded, you're you're gonna look like borderline anorexic or something, you know, to get really shredded. So um, one one thing, I mean, I know you're you're I mean, being a YouTuber and being exposed to so many people. Uh, you you see this happen a lot. What what are your thoughts a little bit on the perception of uh, individuals when it comes to what is perceived on social media to be the ideal male physique versus the reality? That's something I, I, I want to get your thoughts on because I think it's a very very important. <laughs> um, I think that each person needs to decide what what uh, the ideal physique for them is. Uh, they need to, to to decide how big they want to be and how lean they want to be. Because I, I I've seen guys that prefer the the the, the slim and uh, defined look. This is what I this is what I prefer. But I also uh, I've also seen guys that prefer to be to be bigger and fatter. Game Maybe man mode. <laughs> yeah 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 no it's it, so, some people just prefer that look. They they they, they think that uh, being too too ripped looks looks weird. Like mm-hmm. you're you're unhealthy or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I think that. Uh, What's perceived on social media as the ideal physique is someone who is uh, as big as possible and as ripped as possible. And it's it's weird because that that physique is probably is probably maintainable only for very short periods of time. The pictures that you see on Instagram are probably done after a cut uh, with a lot of photoshoot fo- photoshoot preparation in place. Maybe th- the guys stand under the perfect lighting. Uh, they are oiled up, or uh, they 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 have uh, they have taken maybe fifty pictures, and they show you just the single greatest one. And uh, you think that that is the physique that is easily attainable uh, by by anybody. But if you try to take the same picture in your living room, you're not gonna look like that at all, at all. And uh, usually th- these guys either either do it. Either do uh, those photos in the sun or maybe in a studio where the yeah. lighting is perfect. Or lighting, yeah. Yeah, and um, I think that striving for that kind of physique uh, is fine because under the same conditions, you can look like that as well. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it, it's fine. But um, I think that, at least my audience, most people don't, 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 don't want to get there. Mm-hmm. I think the majority of my audience just want to get the Hollywood physique, the physique that they see uh, Hollywood actors have in movies like uh, uh, Brad Pitt in Troy or mm-hmm. Brad Pitt in mm-hmm. Fight Club mm-hmm. or uh, uh, Christian Bale in American Psycho mm-hmm. or uh, Daniel Craig in, 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 uh, as James Bond. These are the, the, the kinds of physiques that are, are impressive, but you realize that that guy do- doesn't spend his whole time in the gym. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 a slightly exactly. different look from a bodybuilder or a fitness model. It's mm-hmm. it's almost you. See, the guy is fit. The guy is muscular. He's lean, but you you realize that his main focus is not fitness. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, I think I think this is the physique the the large uh, majority of my audi- of my audience is going for, and what I'm what I'm going for as well. And um, on social media, that is not the physique that is considered ideal. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The majority of social media, what you see is sort of like guys that you're not really sure if they're even natural. You know, like yeah. it's just a, sort of like this gray area where you can't determine. So it's just enough for you to buy their programs. You know, and and that's that's kind of what it is. You know, it's good marketing. So uh, at the end of the day, really pick your own standards, right? You don't want to live your life according to a, some standard that someone else told you that is the best thing that you should d- dedicate your entire life to. Because that's not really going to make you happy even if you do reach that kind of physique. At the end of the day, as long as you're a slave to someone else's standards, really, I mean, whose life are you living? Are you living that person's goals and ideals and and their values or your own? And that's really, really important to point out here. And um, that's one thing that we really agree on is that, look, man, it's not really about being the most shredded or the biggest guy or whatever it is. It's about being the best you can be and whatever you can achieve, that's your best. And you compare yourself to yourself. If we start comparing ourselves to someone else, you're never going to be happy. It's a trap that, that if you fall into that trap, man, like even with your best friends, you know, if he's lifting, if he's squatting 20 kg more than you in the gym, it, it can make you feel like shit sometimes. But it's just the way it is. You know, some people are naturally more stronger. Someone might not be stressed as much as you do. 
use your own journey as your own kind of compass to just make yourself a little bit better. And that's something I want to close off on. And uh, before I go there is uh, uh, where can people find more about your stuff? Yeah. Some links. Some uh, stuff. <laughs> about your, your, your previous point, I, I don't like a, a quote by Elliot Hulse. He says that uh, comparing yourself with others is the most insidious form of slavery. Mm -hmm. You really are a slave. You you can never be happy as long as you compare yourself to, to, to someone else. Mm -hmm. And um, once you start comparing your progress only against yourself, that that is when you, you truly feel... Uh, feel accomplished and for example what i did is uh, i recently started uh unfollowing people on social media <laughs> yeah e even people that i admire because i realized that uh i was i was getting jealous or restless when i saw that they were doing something that, that i wasn't mm -hmm. and uh, that that just uh made me made me lose sight of what what i'm good at and i just wanted to to replicate what they were doing because they were my mentors or, or people that, that, that I admired. And I think it's all about finding what you are happy with. Mm -hmm. And uh, social media, while it is great, I think it has, um, it has uh, worsened this problem of people comparing their self, th th themselves with others, especially since, so, since on social media you see only the highlights of people's mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. you, don't see, you don't see the day when the guy was sick and uh, he spent whole day the, the, uh, the, the whole day in bed. You see, you, you see him just at, at the finish line, uh, winning the race. And uh, yeah, that's that's what I wanted to to, to yeah, add man, to great that. Great points, great points, man. Yeah. Um, and where you can find me? Uh, my website is uh, thinkitlift.com. You can find a bunch of articles and videos of mine there. And the YouTube channel is my name, Radu Antonio. I uh, I have a large collection of videos there, and most of them are in depth, detailed, and uh, and short. I, I try to to uh, save you time by uh, by quick cuts and by uh, uh, good editing. So I really hope that you that that you'll enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, and that's really awesome with his channel. You guys gotta check that out. I'll leave all the links that he mentioned in the description below so you can uh, see what's up there. And his videos are probably like the best edited videos that I've ever seen in, in anybody else in the fitness industry. It's sort of like giving you the exact what you need to know. It's uh, it's a, the opposite sort of style of some of my videos, which are very long and kind of all over the place where I just go off the rails with my mind. Uh, his is more condensed and to the point for guys that really want to get that kind of information. So it's pretty cool to really uh, get get in touch with, uh, with Radu as well through your website. You can check out some of his programs as well. So... Um, yeah, guys, I mean, uh, that's all the time we have here and I um, yeah, appreciate your attention. We were happy to have you here and uh, share some our experience with you. And um, thanks for watching. Uh, leave us a comment below and uh, we'll stay in touch there a little bit and um, see what you're about. And uh, hit that subscribe button as well. Support the channel a little bit. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Right? That's right. Peace. Peace.